Alleluia. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And Lord of Emmy, bless his holy name. Well, we're in a series. Well, not actually a series. We are just laying the foundation because next Sunday is our Vision Sunday. And that's where I'm going to open up what God wants for us in the year 2024. And as you go out, you will see there's a, the board, is a new board, it says Bolt. And I will tell you how we're going to build and who we're going to build and what God wants to do in your life. God wants to build in you the Christ-like nature. That's what the Bible challenges us. Put on Christ. Have the mind of Christ. Do the works of Christ. Walk as Christ. Speak as Christ. But this morning, I'm going to speak to you about building stones, a spiritual house. Building stones. And I believe that God wants to show you this morning that you're not alone. You're not an island by yourself. You don't have to do, walk, to, to, walk, to do life alone. You don't have to climb your mountain alone. You're part of the body of Christ, where He is the head. And many times God leads us into seasons and places that we, we, we as ourselves cannot explain why we're there. But we have to believe there's a purpose in this journey called life, the life of Christ. Lead, read with me 1 Peter 2, 4 and 5. It says... Welcome to the living stone, that is Jesus, the source of life. Jesus is the source of life. He's your foundation. Without Jesus, there is no life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can have things, but you cannot have life without Jesus. The workman took one look and threw it out. God set it in, the place of honor. Present yourselves. That's the challenge now. Look at a person next to you and say, present yourself. That's the invitation this morning. That God says, come and bring yourself this morning. As what? As a living stone. Present yourself as a building stone for the construction of a sanctuary vibrant with life. You know, when the body comes together, it's a celebration. That's why we call this celebration service. There should be life. It should be vibrant. We should be excited. This morning when I came into the house... And I saw how people interact. You know, for a, for a pastor, this is like the bread of life. That is not, we're not, we're not silent, it's church. We, we, we are interacting, we are vibrant, we are looking forward to have a fellowship. Then it says, in which you all are serve as a holy priesthood, offering Christ-approved lives to God. Everyone, if you are born again, by definition, you are a living stone. If you are born again, God says, I want to build you into my house, but present yourself. So people sit in the house of the Lord, frustrated, irritated, because they're not part of the body. Have you seen when you visit a conference and stuff, and they sing a song maybe, and they say, well, this song says, all oh, move to the left, and then you move to the right, and you're not in, a, you're not in that mood to, to, you know, you don't come to jump up and down in church. You don't come to move to the left and all to the right, and you just stand like this. And then people jump like next to you, and they jump against you. You get irritated. Why? Because you're not part. You're not part. And therefore in church, you get irritated because you're not part of the worship. You're not presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. Come on, family. We are shaped into that living stone. Resulting coming to Jesus qualifies you, distinguishes you as set apart as a living stone for God to build a spiritual house. God is not building a house with stone and windows and roofs. God is building a spiritual house. Why? Because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Your also living stones are being built. Contact with living Jesus makes us alive and fit. For the purpose and the plan that he designed for our lives. Listen to what Ephesians 2.19 says in the message. That's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. Say God is building a home. God is building home and he's using us all, irrespective of how we get there. Each one of us has a journey to Jesus. Different places, different spaces, different ways. But each one of us has journeyed to Christ. 
And when you got to Christ, He redeemed you, He saved you, He washed you, He sanctified you, and He's restoring your identity. Yes. See, the road of sanctification is all about your identity. If you can believe you're a child of God, you will access the promises of the Lord. You will access healing. You will access deliverance. But if you have an identity crisis, the enemy has the, not the ways, not the right, the ways to manipulate you, deceive you that you're not worthy of the blessing of the Lord. Amen? He's using us all, irrespective of how we get here, God here in what he's building. He used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. Just think about personal now, how personal God is this morning. He says, I'm putting in brick by brick. How many of you have seen brick layers? When, they, when we built on at a house in, a, in, in Mayerton, uh, there, was a, there was brick layers. And we counted how many bricks they can lay per day. It's amazing how that guy can take that brick and it fits perfectly. He puts the cement one side, one side, he puts it in, he hits it with the truffle and it's set. God takes you personally. He's a personal God. And he places you into a space that he knows that you're going to function and going to enjoy. Listen, God is not yet to spite us on earth. He's not yet to make your life difficult. He created you for personality, desire, passions, gifts. And he takes you with that package that he has for you. That's what Psalm 139 says. Formed you, moved your mother, fearfully, wonderfully made. Days fashioned for you, yet there was none. And he takes you and he builds you out into the spiritual house. Let me tell you, fulfillment on earth is being the purpose of God. Fulfillment on earth is knowing that God has placed you there and therefore his hand is upon you and therefore success and favor is your portion. What a rest. We see it taking shape day after day. A holy temple built by God. All of us built into it. A temple in which God is quite at home. Wow. Wow. If you can really just fathom this word, that God is at home this morning in this space. God is not uncomfortable with your mistake. God is not uncomfortable with your sin. If it falls short, maybe you got upset, maybe you sweared, maybe you cussed, maybe you you, you used the, the language of the blind or whatever it is. God is comfortable in this space. Jesus was a friend of the sinners. That's why Pharisees hated him. Because the Pharisees always said, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You do this ritual. Do this ritual. And God says, there's no ritual. It's a relationship. Come to me. All are heavy burden. I will give you rest. So whatever you've, you've been this week, I want to tell you, Jesus is comfortable in your space to be with you this morning. This morning, I want to talk to you that God is making us living stones. And that living building, this temple is made of us, you and me. And we're going to look at three concerns how to build this spiritual house give me the three that's it Jesus first that's the foundation and the cornerstone us our second we are the building but listen to this together the purpose there's a purpose Jesus saved you for a reason and the season is not Christmas only Christmas declares Emmanuel God with us But if God is with you, for what reason is he with you? Many times when my wife is with me, there's a reason. We go shopping. (laughs) She doesn't get into the car when I fill the car with gas. So you go. So when she's with me, there's a reason. There's there's an end product. There's a shopping list. There's things to attain. And God says, I'm here for a reason. You're here for a reason. So let's look to number one. Jesus Christ, the foundation The chief cornerstone. Paul writes down in Ephesians 2.20. And he says you are a building upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. You have to build. In the beginning he emphasizes this. That your foundation. Remember last week we talked about how firm is your foundation. Your foundation is the word of God. The Bible says everything will be shaken. But the word of God will not be shaken. God is a firm foundation. He calls us wise and he calls us unwise or foolish. And he says the wise knows there's going to be storms. 
The wise knows the place on earth, your walk on earth is a tough walk as a Christian. To be salt is tough. Many times displeasing people. Many times in their case, trying to, they feel you're trying to offend them. The Bible says we are the light of the world, but salt, salt preserves. But you have to sprinkle it. You have to be used by God. Ephesians 1, 3 says the following. Blessed be the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Foundation, you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. You don't lack. Why? Because the spirit of truth is in you. The Holy Spirit is part of the deity of Christ. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. What God knows, what Jesus knows, the Holy Spirit knows as well. That's why it's the spirit of truth. Who blessed us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in whom we are redeemed through His blood. The forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of His grace. Wow, Jesus first. Jesus cleansed you. He doesn't want you to feel guilty. There should not be an Adam in your life. Adam is the one, the first Adam made a mistake. And when he made a mistake, he hid himself from his presence. God had to call out to Adam. Adam, where are you? Not for God to know where Adam is or were. God is almighty. God's all-knowing. God's all-powerful. But for Adam to realize, don't hide from my presence. I know where you are. Come out. Take away pretense. Take away that, that, that facade of having all to give. And trust me to build you up. Trust me that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. The apostle Peter wrote a message in 1 Peter to the church that were persecuted. And he said to them, come to the living stone Jesus Christ so that you can have life. Isaiah 28, 16 says the following. He says, oh, this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone. Jesus was tested yet without sin. There's nothing that the enemy can test you with. That's what the Bible says. Every temptation is a man-made temptation. You think that the enemy has placed a thought in your mind and, and you've cultivated that thought. You, you fed that thought. You meditated upon that thought and it acted out into a deed. Jesus was tested and he said no. Therefore, I want to tell you this morning, family, you can say no. You might be weak at a certain time, but there will come a time that you're strong in the Lord. He's your safe refuge. He's your tower of strength so that you can withstand the answers of the enemy. See, I've laid a stone in foundation, tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. Listen to this now. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. If Jesus is your tested stone, if Jesus is your firm foundation, it says you and Isaiah, you will not panic. That panic has different meanings. One meaning is that panic is, you won't be disappointed. You won't be ashamed because Jesus will be your refuge. When anything shakes around you, you will not quit on life. But you will continue this race in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus is our Savior. Can you say my Savior? My Savior. He's my Savior. He's my foundation. Any other foundation that you've laid in your life, maybe it's, your, maybe it's a talent you have. Maybe it's a gift you have. Maybe it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's the highest or the family you belong to. Whatever foundation except Jesus is not going to keep you the, under the pressure of this world. There's no other foundation but Jesus Christ. Any other foundation will show cracks in the long run. It will not keep you on track. Life is too tough to build on a foundation of a personality or a gift. Family, Jesus is our cornerstone. He is our precious cornerstone. Maybe I can ask you this morning, is he yours? Just for a second or two, just think about your life. Is it at foundation Jesus or is it Jesus and? See, the, the gospel we preach is not Jesus and, it's Jesus all. Amen. It's not Jesus and do, it's Jesus and done. Amen. What a surety this morning, family. I want to tell you, you're a spiritual house when Jesus is the foundation. 
That's what makes this building an everlasting building. Number two, us, the building material. The building material. God wants to use you, family. Listen, Ephesians 2, 21, 22. In whom all the building fitly framed. That word fitly framed, I'm going to tell you what the Greek word is. And I'm not going to swear when I, when I pronounce it, but it's close. Okay? In all, the building fitly framed together grow unto a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you also are building together. 1 Peter 2, 5 says, yes, a living stone are built into a spiritual house. We need to understand, family, that God is making a building for him. God is forming a temple for him, a spiritual house. But you and I are the building material. We love to say this. Jesus said, I will build my house. And then I want to ask people, but with what? Because we have this idea that Jesus is doing something outside the building. No, you are the building. You are the material. When Jesus said, I will build my house, he had Peter, James, and John in mind. When he says the earth will be filled with my glory, he has you in mind. He's not going to send angels. There's not going to be a sun over all the earth and say, well, there's the glory of God. No, you are glory carriers. The Bible says in Ephesians, Christ in you the hope of glory. So when Jesus says, I will build my house, he says, I want you to be the material that I use to give me glory. Jesus says, listen, I'm making a house for my father. In the Old Testament, they had to make a temple. A dwelling place for God. And I place a tabernacle there, the Ark of the Covenant. As a symbol of the presence of God. And Jesus is building you, sir, into this holy temple so God can stay. The habitation of the Lord can be in you. Amen. The anointing of Christ that destroys the yoke of the enemy is in you. It's not something that comes over you. The goosebumps you experience while preaching, while singing, it's not... The Holy Spirit. Oh, I feel it now. No, he's, here, he's here. No, he's inside of you. There's just a manifestation. Your body cannot handle the anointing. Your body cannot handle the presence. I've watched a, 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 just a clip this week. I'm going to use it next week. The story of the lady, Soul Surfer. Young girl in Australia was on her way to making a mark in the surfing community. When one day she went out to surf and a shock bit off her arm. True story. And the way how she came back. And while I was looking at that story, I got goosebumps. While I was looking at the story, I got teared up. The reality. Enjoying life, enjoying the surf, and in one second, losing her arm. And the struggle to say, God, why me? God, how did it happen? How can I, ah, and she, she wanted to quit the surfing scene, but how can you stroke with one arm? Don't want to get too deep in there. Next week I will tell you. But let me tell you something. You are the material that God wants to use. You might have one arm, but you can use the other arm. Listen, in God there's no imperfection. Moses stuttered. David was the adulteress. I mean, Paul was a murderer. Come on, guys. How many of you killed your neighbor? I know you want to kill your wife, but I'm talking about your neighbor. Because <laughs> when, we, when we got married, the pastor looked at us and said, listen, and he had a dictionary there. He said, listen, in this dictionary, there's the word divorce. And he tore that page out of the, out of the dictionary. He said, there will be no divorce, but killing is all right. You know? <laughs> so when my wife really gets on, I said, I'm going to kill you. Fitly framed together. That word in Greek. Are you ready? Sunarmuligiu? <laughs> what was that? I'm a Greek steward. Come on. I'm not going to try it again. I'm not going to try it again. I've practiced it so much in front of the mirror to pronounce the Greek, you know. Greek and make Greek, you know. Doesn't work. But fitly framed together, it means join closely together. Join closely, to fit together in a building as in the body. That's the picture word of that word says fitly framed together. Join closely, say closely. That is the key, family. We need to be united. Can I say this to you this morning, family? You're not a building by yourself. 
You're not a house, 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 flat, house, townhouse, mansion. No. One building in Christ. All of us are one building. That's why unity in the house is so important. Unity in your marriage is important. Unity in your relationship is important because the Bible says when two agree on earth, nothing is impossible. Unity. Put on the building together of Christ Jesus Cornerstone. We need to be interlocked. Take your fingers, just go like this quickly. Pull it straight. It's not easy to pull it. You have to, you have to wiggle it out. That's how God sees us as a body. Meshed together. And here's the good thing. The stronger we are meshed together, the stronger we are in Christ. Amen. You're the body of Christ, family. Family, we must bond. This year coming, I want you to be, you can call me Ply Bond, not James Bond. <laughs> for, this, for this season and this year, you can say Pastor Bond, Ply Bond, not James Bond. <laughs> when, my, when my wife gave birth to our daughter, Janelle, uh, am I allowed to say breastfeeding on social media? Okay. Uh, my wife says, okay, I can say breastfeeding in social media. But when, when, my, when, when my daughter, okay, she said, no, it's the vet. Oh, I can see that, yeah. It's the vet. The vet was born and um, we had to use some instruments to get him out there and stuff. And there was a, there was a nurse we called a ply bond. Because when she saw my wife, she said, has he latched it? Has he latched it? Has he latched it? I thought, what is this latch thing going on about? And then eventually she said to my wife and she took the, the boy's head and, and all that stuff and just joined him together, you know, fitly, fitly put him together. But we call the sister bond, ply bond. Because for her, it was a standard. For her, it was like life. Lady, you've got the breast smoke and that, that, he needs your breast smoke. It's life for that boy, lady. Don't worry about the pain you're going through. He has to be there. And I want to tell you this morning, if it doesn't matter the pain you have to go through, you have to be here. Being part of the body of Christ. One of mind, one of heart. We must have unity. Okay, if you want to clap, let's do it properly. Let me just explain to your visitors, this is just a private joke, okay? When I drink, you clap. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 27 says, that he might be present to himself, listen to this, a glorious church, that's the building material. Can I say this morning, you're not cheap. You're not, you're not some great quality. You're great A. Jesus paid for you. His blood has flown through you. His blood has washed you. Jesus paid for the best. So this building material is there to be a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such a thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. Wow, that's how, that's how God views you, family. That's how he views, he views you being built into this church, a glorious church. Without spots and wrinkles. Guys, guys, here's a, here's a moment. Here's a moment for you. Look at your, your wife. This is my baby. There's no wrinkles. Okay, well. I see, I see his wife punch him back. Say, the Bible says don't lie to one another. But that is, that, is the, that is the house. That is the building material Jesus is using. He's using you and he's looking at you and saying, listen, you've got no spot, man, of sin. There's no spot of, of, of guilt. There's no wrinkle of impurities in you. I've washed you of my blood. I've sanctified you. My blood made atonement for you. My father looks at you and he says, well done. He is pleased with you. When God made Adam, he said, it's very good. Why don't you believe in yourself when God looks at you that he says, it's very good. Because he views you through the blood of Jesus Christ. But that, that cannot be all. There must be a purpose. Number three, the purpose. Why are God using us, building this temple? Living stones, you are being built into a spiritual house. Isn't that kind of very colorful? Together, the purpose. Purpose, definition of purpose. The reason of which anything is done, existed, and created. 
So God says, when he says, what is your purpose? He says, I've created you for existence to do something. Let me use the word of God, Ephesians 2. In whom the whole structure is joined, fitly framed together, and it continues increasing, growing. Increasing. When, when, when there's a purpose in your growth. There's a purpose in your struggle. We need resistance. How many, how many of you can see I've joined the gym this year? Can you see? Thank you, sir. I've been there once. I've been there once, but I can tell I feel so good, man. You know? But you go to gym for a reason. There's a purpose. Putting on your training shoes, putting on your, 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 your clothes, and you go there, and you walk in, and you sign in, and you go to the gym, and you see the big guys there, and you go, what? Where shall I begin? And then you go to the cardio site. There's a purpose, family. I want, you to, I want you to enjoy the purpose God has for you. There's a purpose for you. It says, and continue increasing, growing into a holy temple into the Lord. A sanctuary dedicated, set apart, and, and sacred to the presence of the Lord in Him. And in fellowship with one another, you also are being built up together in dwelling place of God the Spirit. In Him and in fellowship to one another. You see, you see Jesus is in fellowship. And if you want to have fellowship with Jesus, there's, just, there's someone else that's going to. Jesus, show us the method. Jesus never went alone except by praying. And many times he used, he took someone with him. When they were, Peter, James, and John. Do you know Peter, James, and John? They were always with Jesus because there was fellowship. He had fellowship with the 12. He had fellowship with the 120. He had fellowship with three. So you cannot say, I have fellowship with Jesus and there's no one else around your table. At least there should be four people around your table. You and another three, Peter, James, and John. Because out of the mouths of many, there will be godly counseling. Please, family, don't ask a question and answer it yourself. That's the biggest mistake you can make this year. If you have a question, be around the round table so that no one can squeeze you into a corner. Amen? The Bible says 1 Peter 2, 5. You, believers, are like living stones. This is amplified. Are being built up into a spiritual house a holy, dedicated priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. God says, when I'm building in your life, whatever you do will be acceptable to me. How many times have you prayed? Say, so God, is, is what I'm doing, is it okay for you? God says, listen, if you house, whatever you do, it's okay with me. I'll work in you to make it acceptable. I will, I will be with you. I will, I will take your hand. I will, I will lead you. That's what the Bible says. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but God will direct our steps. Because where you walk and how you walk is important. Ask Jacob. Jacob didn't walk the right way. And God says, listen, you're never going to listen until I leave a mark in your life. Many of, us take, many of us, it's difficult to walk this road of sanctification. It's difficult to walk this road that, that God has called you upon. But by the grace of God, He touches you in a certain way that you can live the rest of your life in independence on Him. Can I do it by myself, Jesus? It's you. And it's you alone, Jesus, that can help me to do this that you've called me to do. Because many times you haven't got a limp. Whatever God's called you, feel too big. But when you have a limp, it's never too big. So it's too big for me, but God, but my God, he will make me able because he's willing and able to use me to his glory and to his presence. We are habitation of God, family. We are a place where God's glory is seen, offering up spiritual gifts. Family, the church is a living body that has the glory of God. And God is challenging us this year. Can people see me in the church? Can people see me in your life? Is there something that you reflect is there something about Jesus that you smell? So a shepherd smell like sheep. A Christian should smell like the blood of the lamb. There's just, there's just a aroma around you, man. Heaven's all around, heaven's all around. I mean, if, if heaven's all around, there's a aroma. The rose of Sharon is in our midst. That's why when there's a demon, there's, there's, a, there's a, what is that, swall? Sulfur. When a demon is manifesting, there's a sulfur smell. But let me tell you, when, when God is present, there's a sweet smell, sweet aroma. 
We do this as a reflection of his glory in this world. To sacrifice ourselves for the purpose of his kingdom. And this year there's five spaces that we're going to just trust God to build us in. And we as a body can manifest. These five spaces is worship, ministry. Can I have the slide please sir? Evangelism, fellowship, and discipleship. I've, I've put that little words, that little words is just the definition I googled. It's not my revelation, it's Pastor Google said, just use this, it will make you look good. Okay? So, worship, the feeling or expressions of reverence and adoration for God. Worship is a feeling. That's why we cry, that's why we laugh. But it's more than a feeling, it's also a truth. But it starts with that emotion, starts with that feeling, expression of reverence and adoration, ministry, the work or vocation of a minister of religion. Ministry is work. Say to the spouse next to you, ministry is work. You cannot go around it. It's not a dream. It's not a sand castle. It is work. Evangelism, spreading, the spreading of Christ's gospel by public preaching or personal witness. So if you know how to vandalize, tell your story. There's always someone willing to hear to tell your story. Yeah. Fellowship. A friendly association. That is fellowship. Listen, I don't need. Fellowship is a friendly association. Okay. Especially with people who share one's interests. Is Jesus is your interest? Is church life is your interest? It's easy to have fellowship with someone. Discipleship, just plain and simple, the process of making someone becoming Christ-like. If you don't want to be like Jesus, don't be a disciple. Easy as that. Easy as that. Listen to what Revelation three one says. That's the church of Sardis. The angel, divine messenger of the church in Sardis wrote, "These are the words of him." Whereas the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name. Because it's amplified, you know this. You have a name. You have the reputation that you are alive. But in reality, you are dead. Speaks to the church. The seven churches in Revelation is a church that's, we in the church age. And there's different church age and therefore different manifestation of the church. We want to be the church of Philadelphia, brotherly love. But he speaks to Sardis and says, listen, I know it. You've got a name eh, in town. You've got a name around block. You've got a name somewhere between your friends. But reality, it's a reputation that is dead. It's not alive. Because in reality, there's no life without Jesus. There's no life without Jesus, family. We need to be on the rocks, Jesus Christ. We need to be planned by his, by his Lordship, by His hand. So this week I want to challenge you. We're part of the prayer, the 21-day prayer and fasting. Many of you have not fasted, or many of you have fasted, and it's okay, you've stopped. But I cannot ask you, it's not so much about the fasting this week, it's about the praying this week. Join us in our prayer meetings this week, Monday to Friday, 7 to 8. Say 7 to 8. It is not difficult. You have had supper. The kids are washed. You can come for an hour. I promise you, 8 o'clock, I stop the service. Doesn't matter what's happening. Stop the service, you can go home. But I want to ask you, I want to ask you to pray this week. Pray, see God's face with me this week. Because can I say, it is, it's determined. So I want you to pray with me this week. As those who encounter... What Jesus say doing in his community. Ask those you encounter this week what I think the church ought to do in the community. When you meet one another this week, say, what do you think the church needs to be in our community? We prayed for our community. We walked around this church building, raising our hands to the north, south, east, and west, blowing the, blowing the shofar. So God, we need to impact our community. We are a community-based church. Ask yourself, listen to this, I need all your attention right now. Ask yourself what the church could do to glorify God in each 
of these five areas, listen to this, then ask God to help you to be willing to sacrifice to see this happen. Say, Lord, what, what is my niche? What is, what is that what you called me? Where, where am I building as a living stone? And then ask him to help you, to give you the grace to sacrifice to be part of that team. But he has the reason, and the reason only. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So then, whenever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Whatever you get involved with is not to please the pastor. It's not to please the base group guide. It's to please God. Because tomorrow and this morning you understood that you're part of his dwelling place. He has bought you. You are his material. He has purchased you with the blood of the lamb. Listen to what John 4, 23 says. Jesus made this statement to his disciples. And I want you to hear that this morning. But the time is coming. And it's already here. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit. From the heart, the inner self, and in truth. For the Father seeks people to worship Him in such a manner. We are to live as worshipers in this hour that God seeks. But can I tell you this morning, we cannot worship God without action. We cannot minister to others without action. We cannot evangelize without action. We cannot fellowship without action. We cannot have disciples without action action. If we are true worshipers this morning, seeing that Jesus called you precious and you're building on this precious cornerstone and seek the truth, here's the question this morning I want to leave with you. Do we want to be a spiritual house or do we want to be a religious house? Are we living stones? Are we fixed upon Jesus and doing his will? Are we willing to sacrifice to do what he has sent us for? How's your spiritual life? And how's your spiritual house? That is the challenge this morning. How's your spiritual house? Is Jesus the gatekeeper of your house? But it starts with the foundation in Jesus. If you're not born again, family, listen to me. If you're not born again, this message will mean nothing to you. It might have a well factor, but it will not change your life until you meet the changer of life, Jesus. Jesus. You cannot do life alone, but life starts with Jesus. If you have someone here this morning and you have not received Jesus Christ, I just want you to pop your hand up. Or you can come to me after the service. So Pastor Martin, I'm not born again. I've never received this Jesus you talked about. I've never opened my life for him to live in and through me. I understand this morning there's a purpose for my life. But it starts with Jesus. Amen. Let's give God praise, family, this morning. Hallelujah.